Hi, and welcome back to the HSP Connection with me, Philippa Robinson. And me, Robbie Lee. This is where we share our stories, insights, and strategies to help fellow highly sensitive people navigate their own path to living a fulfilling and meaningful life. We're on a mission to reclaim the word sensitive and help the world see the strength in sensitivity. So, Robbie, today's a special day, isn't it? It is. Today, Philippa, we are joined by a few members from our community, and we're talking about what we love about being highly sensitive people. So you and I, as we know, can go on and on about this topic, and likely will, um, and and we're making space uh, for a few of our community members to join us as well, because this is our 50th episode, I think we counted. Yeah. yeah. Which is, seems like quite an accomplishment. It, it does. And to be honest, it doesn't even seem like it's been, well, it feels like we've been doing it for a long time. And it feels like it was only yesterday that we started it. Yep. Same. And, and here we are, 50 episodes in. So, um, you know, I probably wouldn't say this to myself, but why it's both of us. Well done, us. <laughs> well done, us. Yes. Well done, yes. us. Yeah. So, and it feels really apt that we're talking today about reasons that we're thankful that we're HSPs. Yeah. Um, do you, would you like, I know, you know, we've both got great things to say, but I love some of the ones that we've just briefly mentioned before we start recording. Would you care to start? Sure. I'll kick us off with one, one, one that always pops top of my mind when this topic is up is I love that I create a safe place for people where they can share what's true for them, where they feel held and safe. And I didn't realize for the longest time I was doing that. I just had this experience where people would always tell me things and um, they seemed to feel better after, you know, chatting with me and strangers would tell me things. And I'm an introvert. So for a stranger to tell me something, I was just like, wow, what's happening? And I, I, you know, I kept having that happen. Then I found out I was a highly sensitive person. And I thought, oh, I bet this is one of the, this is one of my gifts. This is one of the things that I am doing without even knowing it. And now that I know what I'm doing, I can do it even more intentionally. And I think the world can be such a place. <laughs> it can be scary. It can be loud. It can be sad. I mean, it can also be amazing. But I think it's so important to have places where we feel safe and seen and heard and not judged, welcomed, like for who we are. And that is truly what I think I offer people and what people say I offer. And it makes my heart so happy that I can create that in the world. Um, yeah, that's usually top of my list. Oh, I love that. <laughs> and um, it'd, be a bit, it'd be a bit of a shame if you could do that and didn't enjoy it. So it's yeah. wonderful that that's <laughs> what you do. And that you love that and you enjoy it and it makes it something that you can willingly give. It's it's a real yeah. gift, isn't it? Yeah. And, you, you know, you do create those spaces. I know you do. I, I am regularly in a safe um, space with you and it really is a special place to be. Um, mm, thank you. Yeah. Um, I wonder, because I think also you know, we're both coaches. So we, we, you know, and we both coach online. Um, and we are able to do that online as well. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, I was listening to something, um, the other week, a coach talking about how they hate coaching online because they, they, they can't interact. So this wasn't an HSP coach and they said they can't, they don't feel like they can interact in the same way with a 2D picture, which is what they likened being online with. And I find that really interesting. So, you know, you've just talked about the safe spaces that you create and you do that in real life. I've been with you in real life. I've been with you here on Zoom. And um, how do you feel that 
your ability to create a safe space translates online? I know it does, but do you have a, a sense of how your gift enables you to do that? Yeah, I, I, it's interesting because I thought before I started connecting to people over Zoom, I thought I would be one of those people that wanted to be with somebody in the space, you know, physically in the space. And what I have found, it is so easy for me to to have that connection with people over Zoom. Mm. It's like, it's easy for me to, like, there's no distance. Like, mm. I can't, my... <laughs> I feel like these little energy tendrils, like we just go out and we connect and we meet and we're together and the, which has opened up the world for me. Like you and I get to do the podcast from on other sides of the world, you know, yep. um, people in our community, <laughs> we're all from different locations, but we get to come together and be in the same space. And I feel everybody that is in the space with me. Like I can still, all of my HS penis, our favorite word. <laughs> you had to do it, didn't you? You had, I had to do to. it. I couldn't yeah. help it. I couldn't yeah, help I'm it. glad we've got that out of the way. <laughs> it, I mean, it still operates, whether in person or distance, yeah. because I don't know why. I was going to say because, yeah. and then I'm like, well, I don't know why, but I know it works. Like, it, I can connect to people easily. Yeah, it yeah. just does. It just does. Yeah. yeah. And and actually overanalyzing it and trying to work it out doesn't change anything because actually it does just happen. Yes. Yeah. I completely agree with you because I've never coached uh, face-to-face, actually. I've only ever done it online and it's always worked. And I've always been a bit like, hmm, this is interesting because the more you hear about it, the more you hear it doesn't work. And I really think it does. And I do think it's... Mm, the the way I uh, interact and the way um, and the energy and all those other wonderful things that come with being an HSP that help me do all that online. Mm-hmm. So, I mean, you know, that's another reason I guess I'm grateful that I'm an HSP because it does enable me to have these deep, you know, rich uh, conversations with you for the podcast and to connect with people on a, a all over the world like we do um it's and it's not a substitute for being with people in real life it's just different and it like opens the world up like you said exactly right yeah and I've noticed too in just depending on what I'm doing with the person online is sometimes better because it focuses my senses mm. where, you know, when you're in the same space with someone, it's like you're picking up even more information. And so then it's more to to process. So in some ways, being online is better for the kind of work I do. Mm. Yeah. Depends, it, there's pros and cons. There's pros and cons to both. But oh. I, I think what's great though is that our gift works in either either space right either way which is awesome yeah and before we just move on to another uh, something else amy has put uh, a comment in the chat thank you amy and you know amy says and i think she's talking about um your point about creating safe spaces rather than uh, uh, what we just moved on to about being online and she says a similar similar thing happens to me i also feel i help people see each other's point of view Ooh, that is, um, that's really great, isn't it? I mean, we need more people who can see both sides or many sides um, and and bring people together. Yes. Amy, is that something you want to comment more on? No pressure. But if you did have more to say, you're welcome to use the space. Sure, Ravi. And, you know, I feel a similar thing happens to me like I'm on the playground and kids come up to me or like, you know, people ask me parenting advice. And so I really connected a lot with that. Um, And this was really something I thought everybody could do. And I feel (laughs) like in my work now, I'm just more intentional about being like, well, do you see that this parent feels like this, this administrator feels like this, and this teacher feels like this, and everybody looks at me like, No, I had no idea. Thank you. (laughs) You know, Um, so that for me has been the thing is realizing that not everybody can do this. Yeah, you're absolutely right. And, you know, so empathy is a really great um, trait 
of, of us HSPs. And what you're doing is drawing on your empathy for all these different um, people's point of view and realizing if you can help them all see each other's point of view, then where's the commonality? And maybe they might feel different you know hopefully they might be able to feel a bit differently about something if they know where the other person is coming from yeah is that that's what you meant isn't it yeah 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 definitely. yeah and that brings me back to communication really because a lot of the time I feel that we we not we as in HSPs but you know people out there in the world we make so many assumptions about what people are thinking or what the meaning behind um something that that somebody has said but we don't always check it out in fact we rarely check it out we just sit in our assumption and think you know without even realizing that's what we're doing but the other person might have meant something completely different and we've missed that point that that um that moment to either resolve something or to connect over it or to make it clear and I think Absolutely. as I think on the whole, we're pretty good communicators. Yeah. I think and I think too, it can be so easy for people to have tunnel vision about their own experience because mm. it's like, well, this is this is the life I'm living. And what's so great about what Amy was talking about, as HSPs, we can help, like you were saying, Philip, bridge those connections, mm. right? We can help people to see other people's points of view. And again, when I think about the type of world I want to live in, mm. that's the type of one world. Uh, that's the type of world I want to live in, where people are listening to each other, where they're seeing the perspective of the other person, and not just their own, right? And then that they are also being seen by others. Yeah, I mean, it's yeah. That well, would be very we're, in the U- United States, we're gearing up for another another election season and so this is really top of mind for me it's just like oh this uh, this is just it's a great example of where what hsps bring to the world make it better and it's yeah it is also one of my favorite things amy thank you for bringing it up i love it i guess the polarity that goes on there is pretty divisive isn't it yeah yeah. And it's, yeah, yeah. it's painful. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I can imagine. Um, so I suppose what came up for me first when I thought about this, um, I mean, you know, it is my big picture, really. The My being an HSP and the way it shows up for me is, and I know this is the same for everybody, but this, this is always the top of my list when anybody asks me what is the best thing about being an HSP. And it really is like the, the lens that I see the world through and I had no idea until I don't know three three and a half years I guess I really should hone in on that date and work out what it is but um it might be getting for four now but anyway that until then I had no idea that that was the lens that I was looking through the world with and now I do know it it's just so um it's just so ingrained in who I am and the way that I am in the world and the way that I can connect with other people and the way that I just kind of know things sometimes without, you know, without knowing why. Um, And it's the lens that I see the world through and I would not know how to navigate the world without it. And so Yes, I suppose if I wasn't an HSP, I would never have experienced this. But I am so thankful that I do have this trait and that it's such a positive thing for me. I'm not saying there's not challenges, um, but the, the the great things of it about it far outweigh the challenges. Now, I'm not saying it's always been like that, but now um, the, the great things far outweigh the challenges. And I absolutely would not change it because I don't know how I would do that basic thing of connecting with people without picking up on all the information that I pick up on and can work out 
I don't know, we'll just, just work out, you know, what they're feeling, where their conversation's going, how to tweak it, how to maybe this might work a bit better or, or all those manner of things, depending on who it is that I'm engaging with. Um, yeah, so that is my favourite thing. I know that's a bit of a big picture overview, but it, I, that feels really important to me. Yeah. And and <laughs> I mean, when, when you said that, I'm just like, yeah, what you love about being an HSP is everything. <laughs> <laughs> Yes. And, you know, you're right. It's like when when you are talking, I was imagining, okay, what if I didn't interact with the world the way I do? And it would be like losing a piece of myself. It's just we, because we process so much information and so deeply mm -hmm. that it does help all of these connections that we're talking about. And to be cut off from that, well, it feels painful is, you know, just even imagining that I wouldn't, I would feel lost. I wouldn't know how to navigate at no. all. Yeah. Yeah. And, um, you know, we were both navigating like for so long using the trait without knowing that's what we were, we were right. doing. And that can be hard because it doesn't yes. feel like we're navigating in the same way as people around us. Yes. So it, it can be a challenge, but when you, when you own it and you understand it, when you know it and you embrace it, that's the word I meant to say, embrace, then it becomes a whole um, a whole different feeling around it, doesn't it? Absolutely. And, you know, the other piece to that, too, is like learning how to regulate your nervous system. I yeah. think that helps all of us, too, to be, to be able to really enjoy what is wonderful about being an yeah. HSP. And I mean, I, I use the language I like to talk about, like developing a relationship with my gifts. And it's kind of what I was thinking about as you were talking. It's just like, um, that's my way of owning it. It's acknowledging it and sending love that way instead of what I did most of my life, which was think things like, what is wrong with me? Yeah. Why am I broken? Why am I so weird? Why can't I handle this? Because I didn't know how my system was set up and I didn't recognize all of the wonderful things about being an HSP for a number of reasons. One of which, like you mentioned, the people around me weren't interacting with the world that way. And I didn't have any information telling me it was a good way to interact with the world. And I didn't also really understand the ways that I w was interacting uh, I think Amy mentioned it. It was just like, oh, I just thought everyone could do this. Or maybe Philippa, you did. Somebody mentioned, oh, I thought everybody could do this, right? Which is another story we do. So we're not even recognizing, oh, we have these cool things we do that yeah. other people can't. And so by being on this path of self-discovery, really learning, oh, oh, wait, I can do these things other people can't do. And they're really valuable. Yeah. And being able to help my nervous system calm down and give it the love it needs so that it can continue to process the wealth of information we get all the time. You know, those things together have helped me really, really fall in love with being an HSP, truly. And that's why self-love is one of your favorite topics. <laughs> it is, yeah. Yeah. It is, yeah. Yeah. And there is, there is something that I just want, uh, that came to mind when you were talking about that. And, um, now, this is going to sound really strange. I found it quite a challenge to realize that I wasn't broken because I'd identified for so long as being broken, as being, I don't think I even knew I was different. Um, but it was kind of like I had this the identity piece that was about I don't fit in, um, nobody wants me, I'm broken, all of these things. Yeah. Um, and I know that sounds odd for me to then have a challenge around not feeling that, but it had been so much a part of me yes. that it was wonderful, absolutely wonderful to find out that it wasn't that I was broken. And it was wonderful to find like-minded people to spend time with who just got me and I could belong in that space. And that was the challenge. Um, 100%. Yeah. And 
I don't know. It just feels, yes, we're all talking about being thankful and I am absolutely so thankful, but it just felt really important to say that if anybody's listening to this and has recently found out they're an HSP, don't, don't be surprised if you feel a little bit like it's a, a challenge for that reason. I know it's a challenge for all manner of reasons when you first find out and you learn how to be um, as an HSP in the world. Um, but that, I mean, that challenge has long gone. You know, I am, you know, really happy, really, you know, um, don't feel broken anymore. And I don't feel a challenge around that, but I really did. Yeah. Well, it's an identity shift, right? Yeah. And then it's absolutely. like looking back at your life through this different lens. I mean, it brings up a ton of things for people. I know I went through my own set of things. So, it, I mean, it makes sense. Like anytime we're shifting our idea about who we are, there's mm-hmm. like some resistance in us and some like, what now? What? Is, yeah. What? Yeah. So, yeah. yeah. I'm glad even you- letting go of that negative, even letting go of that really painful thing. Yeah. 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 And it's I part can, of us. And I can see, you know, everyone else here who's nodding away with us going, yeah, okay. So it's not, it's not just <laughs> us. It's us all, us all feeling like that. Um, yeah. Oh, um, oh. Amy says, it was also a relief to realize I don't need to develop develop a tougher skin. Yeah, because we hear that a lot, don't we? You just need to toughen up or, yeah, Gosh. get a thicker skin. Yeah. And um, what I say to that is maybe person who's telling me I need a tougher skin, maybe you should do things so I don't need one. <laughs> like, Because <laughs> usually when people say that, it's... It's because there's bad behavior that's happening, right? Or something painful happened. And, you know, I heard this a lot in the workplace. I know we can hear it in families growing up too. Those are typically the places we hear it a lot. And it's just like, or maybe you could develop a healthier work culture for us so that the people navigating in this space don't have to wear armor in order to get through the day. How about that? Yeah, exactly. You know? Very good point. Very good point. So we both talked before we came on about one of our favorite joint things that 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 we talked about about being an HSP and that's intuition. Yes. This is another one of those things that looking back I now see it's been with me my whole life. I didn't realize it. I didn't know the gift that I had and there's there's a a strong period in my life where I kept ignoring it, not intentionally, but it's like I would get a knowing and then my brain would talk me out of it. You know, I've shared this with you before. <laughs> yeah. And, and I, I just kept hearing myself going, oh, I should have trusted my gut. And I said that over and over and over and over and over and an embarrassingly lot of times, <laughs> a large amount of times. And then one day I said, what if I did listen to my gut? And then I just started doing, it was just like, okay. Oh, and and I started like looking for it because I was really familiar with my brain logicking, doing its logic thing, right? We get a lot of training in that, I feel like, and not as much training in trusting your knowing, trusting your intuition, trusting your gut. And so- Yeah, I started going, okay, what if I did trust my gut? And so I had to actually start talking to my brain because my brain would be there going, oh, you've had an intuition. Logic (laughs) is here for you, you know? And and I just start talking to my brain going, I hear you. I appreciate you. I'm going to trust my gut this time, you know, but your insight has been weighed. And brain's like, okay, well, did my job, you know? And I started listening to my gut. And then what I found is, first of all, it was right. (laughs) As evidenced by the bajillion times before when I said, I should have trusted my gut. It's just like, oh, well, yes, when I do trust my gut, good things happen. And I found that as I started trusting it, then it was also easier to hear. It was, you know, and so then it's, it's, that's when I say like developing a relationship. It's like, oh, I'm paying attention to it. It shows up. I listen to it. Good things. I pay attention. It's a wonderful cycle, you know? Um, Yeah, and I get intuition about so many things because again, we get info from so much. 
like, you know, you've talked about just like knowing things about people or knowing how a process is going to unfold, knowing, you know, like, I mean, people would say to me before, like, can you, can you see the future? And I'm like, well, not exactly, but it's just like, I can see how the, why don't you see this? Like, it's, it seems really obvious, but now I, I get it. Like we see things other people don't see because we're taking in more information. We, are, we have better access to, to seeing things than other people who don't receive all that info. And yeah, I love my intuition. I would absolutely feel like I was flying blind in life if I didn't have access to that. What about yeah. you, Philippa? Yeah, well, I'm a little bit distracted at your little role play there of your of your brain and your gut. And I, <laughs> I'm I'm imagining us doing like some role play further down the line. And I don't know, I think I don't know who's going to be the brain and who's going to be the gut, but I think that would be quite amusing. So yeah, I, yeah I, that would be. I I'm just it. loving that you're getting into this idea of role play first and foremost. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> thank you for demonstrating. For you, Philip. I will do it for you. Yeah. Well, thank you. You're uh, very kind. <laughs> and um, intuition. I I think I think I always. It's funny. Um, I probably. I think I remember. It might have been before I started recording podcasts with you, actually, but I did a podcast about intuition, and I started off saying something like, mm, "Not quite sure about my intuition." And that was before I discovered I was an HSP. And then it's not like, oh, all of a sudden I, oh, all of a sudden I've got good intuition. It wasn't like that. It was all of a sudden that I realized that I, I had, it, it's, of course, it's always been there, but I didn't listen. I didn't, I didn't, yeah. uh, I didn't trust it perhaps. And yeah. I and a lot of that, you know, in childhood, I'd be picking things up and I'd be asking questions and I'd be told, don't be so daft what you're talking about, you know. And, uh, you know, it's very hard to trust that intuition that if you're constantly being told that what you are picking up on is not true um because it was true um and I get that I get that from all the adults they didn't want to know that I was picking up on those things and uh but when I learned that um intuition and having a relationship with your intuition and uh, is a real big thing because we take in so much information we process so deeply we we do really have a great relationship with our intuition and when I learn to tap into that and have a relationship like you've mentioned that's just it's just got stronger and stronger um and I've tr I trust it more so you know we we do a lot of things together based on what feels good and when we're doing that when we're working out what feels good for both of us we're both tapping into our intuition and it's 100 yeah and if it doesn't feel good for one of us we won't do it that's right. Um, and it is just so important and so valuable. And, you know, we we need <laughs> we need more people, um, you know, who are tapping into their intuition. And the thing then is to be to find your voice to 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 to, to put it out there. Yes. Um, and, and that's what part of what we hope to do. Um, you know, is 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 give uh, people who are listening to this podcast and, you know, our other episodes, you know, more of a feeling of grounded confidence in their HSP-ness so that they so that they can voice what they're feeling, what they're intuitively knowing, uh, because we kind of need that. Not kind of, we do. <laughs> we need it so much. We need it so much. Yeah. I mean, in Western culture, for sure, um, intuition isn't the thing that's looked at. And, and I think even as women, too, I feel like we're even mm -hmm. more encouraged to not trust our own guts. Like, and oh my gosh, there's a there's a place for reasoning. There's a place for logic for sure. And there's a place for intuition. <laughs> like our yep. our body tells us things that our mind doesn't have access to, and our knowings are real. And 
I mean, I want to encourage people to listen to their own wisdom. Yeah. To listen to those, that intuition, to listen to that knowing on the inside, listen to that. You know, I feel like some of the biggest changes in my life are when I just followed my intuition, even when my brain was going, what the F are you doing? It's like, for example, moving across the country with my wife, um, we did not have jobs waiting for us. We had a rented room. We packed up our whole house (laughs) and you and trailered our way, you know to the Pacific Northwest and because we both were just like, this is where we need to be. This is where we need to be. We trusted it and it's absolutely where we needed to be. Um, but if my brain had been there, I wouldn't have done it. it. Like it would have scared me out of it. Yeah. Yeah. You're, um, you're right. Uh, because our, the logic comes in and goes, yeah, but what about jobs and what about money and how are you going to live and what happens if you don't find it? And it's like, no, 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 no. This is what feels right. This is what we're going to do. Yeah. Yeah. And I don't mean to say that as a way of like ignoring reality. I don't yeah. mean that, but I, I do mean when you have that strong knowing to do something, that's what I'm talking about. Like do that, even if the logic doesn't make sense. That's what has been true for me that has made really big, wonderful shifts in my life. Yeah. Um, Which is a different thing than just ignoring everything that is real and jumping somewhere because you don't want to face something. Like, I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about trusting that big pull somewhere or that big knowing. Yeah. Yeah, it's it's interesting because as you're talking, I was trying to think, okay, what big things? I mean, my intuition tells me things all the time, but what big things? And the, the first thing that comes to mind is something that I didn't listen to as quickly as I should have done. So I knew that the, my youngest son, there was something going on with him at school. I knew there was. Um, and I kept bringing it up and everyone kept telling me, no, it's absolutely fine. It's exactly where he should be. Da, 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 da. And lo and behold, it turns out he's dyslexic. And he, you know, he was just about keeping up until he got to secondary school. And, um, and you know, I think I'm going to say, unfortunately, he he he's switched off now. He thinks teachers don't care. He's he's not really that interested, and that is because I think he, he's had this inner struggle all the time. Um, anyway, but the point is, my intuition, I knew, I knew there was something, but I didn't know what to do. I didn't know what it was, and I didn't know where to go. And bit by bit, I sort of worked it out. Um, So, but my intuition was telling me that there was something um, and with hindsight, yes, I perhaps would have done something sooner, but, you know, better late than never and all that. Well, and to your point, I mean, sometimes our intuition will tell us something and then we don't know what to do with that. And then no one else, no one else around us is going, oh yeah, I see that too. Or, you you know, so then you're the lone person going. Oh, but I am feeling this. It doesn't mean we always know what the path forward is. I mean, that's true. That is true. Yeah. You know? So that can be a bit of a tricky place to be. Um, yeah. And I suppose it's just notice. You know, if you have that feeling, I don't know, notice what's going on around and notice, see if bit by bit you can you can sort of fill the picture in um, and make it make sense. Hmm. Yeah. Like yeah. 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 Um, where do you want to go next? Mm. Well, I'm looking. Oh, yep. Yeah, I looked down at my notes. This is another one that I think of quickly when I think about what I love being, what I love about being a highly sensitive person. And that is how deeply I love. I just, mm. I connect deeply with people and I love them deeply and it makes my heart happy. Like I, I just really like it. Um, yeah, it makes me feel warm and fuzzy. <laughs> yeah, I, I saw probably, a lot of nods in the room. Yeah, we're yeah. all feeling warm and fuzzy now, thinking about yeah. how that comes into our lives as well. Mm-hmm. And yeah, yes, we feel deeply, we connect deeply, we love deeply, like you yeah. say. And how wonderful, how wonderful is that? Thank goodness for that. I know, again. The world needs more of that. Like, I feel like, I mean, I really am on a mission to get more 
HSPs bringing themselves into the world, getting what they need to feel like they can just be who they are in the world. Because I truly, from the bottom of my heart, believe that creates a better world for everybody. If we are being ourselves in the world, because we create these safe places, we love deeply, we help people connect to each other. Like, we're amazing. Yeah, we are. Yes. And, you know, all those things you said, you know, that we we do and actually taking the picture as a whole again a little bit. This obviously seems to be where I'm going today. Let's zoom out as well as zoom in. It, you know, because we feel so deeply and we have deep empathy and we process emotions deeply, you know, um, we we have emo- on the whole amazing emotional intelligence. You know, we are we are great people to have around i mean we would say you're welcome i have to say it at one time this episode (laughs) you're You're welcome people yes (laughs) yeah yeah exactly um and you know we certainly don't need any less emotional intelligence do we around in the world (laughs) no goodness no yeah oh and amy says um that's how i realized i was an hsp when when her mum passed feeling the deep loss and deep love for her yeah yeah i'm sorry i didn't know that about your mum and how wonderful to have loved her so deeply you know yeah yeah and i also feel like i can connect to her still after i've passed i feel like that's a gift of it as i can i can feel I can still feel connected to her. Yeah. Yes. I connect to my past loved ones as well. I love that. Yeah. Thank you for sharing that. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Mm. Um, I think we're sort of coming to the end. Not quite. Ooh, so if can anybody I say wants... one, can I say oh, yeah. one more before we yeah? Of course you can. And because... just before you do that, anybody yes. who's here who wants to put anything in the chat, maybe your yes. one favorite thing. It might have been something that we've said, it might be something else that you've got. Um, if you don't want to come on and say it live, that's fine. But maybe just one thing in the chat, that would be amazing. Um, sorry to interrupt you. I think I interrupted you. So my apologies. I, one of the things I love about being an HSP is how much I self-reflect and I'm constantly wanting to learn and grow, like learn about myself, but also learn about other things and grow. And I think it's, that's part of another thing I love about being an HSP, which is my resiliency. Mm. And Those two things I see as a pattern across the people I talk to and work with, like, like other humans, you know, we experience trauma and we have tragedy and we feel that very deeply. And because of how we're wired, we also have this deep capacity to heal. And I think of us like alchemists. I've said this to so many of my clients because what I keep seeing is this pattern of we have something that is painful to us. We dig in there (laughs) and however way we are led to do that, we learn something. And then often through that transformation, we then are sharing that with other people. So it's like we share what we learn we share what we know and i think it's i think it's amazing again it's it's us taking this painful thing alchemizing it into growth and love and helpfulness yeah i love that word alchemize yeah i just um i i love the way you're using it as well i don't know i just love that word um and um I think you're absolutely right. And that's why a lot of us use the experiences that we've had in life, Uh, you know, because most of us, I mean, I hope this changes, but I think most of us don't grow up as HSPs, um, be nurtured and having our sensitivity, uh, um, accepted, loved, nurtured, all of those things. So, you know, we, we've we grown up in perhaps more difficult situations. And when we, when we do understand that more, we want to use that. Like you say, we want to alchemize it. We want to use it for the greater good to help other people, other HSPs realize 
um, you know, how great life can be. Yeah. You know, and we and, help non-HSPs too as well. Don't get me wrong. We're not just going, oh, you're an HSP. Oh, no, you're not, right. You know, we're not helping you. Uh, it's not like that, is it? But the point of this podcast and our community here, you know, is to pull pull HSPs together so that we can all be together and learn together and grow together um, and support each other. Absolutely. Anna, I think you had something you wanted to say. Yeah, I've, um, oh, I agree with everything, everything that's been said. And it's hard to pick a favourite sometimes, even <laughs> though in the beginning everything seemed really hard to navigate. Now everything's my favourite. But I think for me, my favourite is, it is the connection. It's the rich inner world that I have from being an HSP, which then helps me to connect with others, especially other people who know the HSPs, because you've all you've got that bond immediately. Um, whereas you meet people and they are HSPs, but they don't quite know it, and you're still a little bit mismatched in the beginning. But I think it is that enormous, expansive inner world, that richness of the inner world that we create for ourselves. And when, one thing you were saying, uh, Philippa, about the the intuition, it's like to me that level of truth and integrity is mine and ours. It's like we bring things into the world with such integrity because we couldn't not, because our intuition wouldn't let us. It it feels false or it feels like lying when we're not in line with our intuition. And so we have so much more integrity when we're co- coming from that place um, of knowing my HSPs and knowing how much we want to help because anything other just, I don't know, that that mismatch of our intuition, it's like it's just something's off. I mean, it's like it's not fitting right, it's not sitting right, I'm not feeling right. And then it's like, oh, yeah, that's my intuition. I'm not in integrity with that, with myself, with myself. So, yeah, it's like a huge inner landscape that um, that we develop and then that's how we connect by recognizing that in others. So those, those are my favorite things about being HSP. I love that so much. Yes. Thank you. The inner landscape. I did have it on my list. I'm really glad you brought that up. Yes. It's so true. I, I love my inner landscape as well. <laughs> I, I won't go on and on about it, but I love being in there. Yes. Yeah. It's beautiful. Yeah. Thanks, Anna. Um, And Amy says, I take care of myself well because my body is so sensitive that I need to do yoga, eat healthy, not overindulge because it affects me more than others. Yeah, absolutely. Um, It does. But when you look after yourself, you feel great. You feel wonderful. You feel, I don't know, like we can change the world, hopefully. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> maybe that's a bit over optimistic but you know hey you know why not why not I mean but it is and it isn't because even like when I was talking about we're alchemists and we tend to then help others even if we don't if if we're not teachers or coaches or even if just what we do is we alchemize our own pain then yeah. we are changing the world <laughs> because we're then putting love back into the world instead of pain with every interaction we're having with people. And yeah, I mean, yeah, it's one of my lofty ideals. We always talk about changing the world. And I think TV and media and yada, yada gives us this idea of what changing the world looks like. But I also think changing the world happens truly like one person at a time. And think about when you, when when you change yourself, I mean, I think about as I've changed how my interactions with my spouse have changed and how my interactions with my family has changed. And I mean, that is a difference. And if that's all I did with it, it would still be changing the world. Yeah. I also feel very drawn to be on a platform and <laughs> share this more broadly with other people and to coach and to do all that. And and we don't have to do that to change the world, you know. That's, I think, our path forward, Philip. That's what we're feeling drawn to do. But for people listening that are like, well, I don't want that kind of spotlight, please don't feel like you have to have it. Right? But you doing your own work and um, loving who you are, loving your HSP-ness, uh, it does change the world. It, it absolutely does. Um, because you are 
the ripple effect you just don't see, but the ripple effect will absolutely be happening. And you know, when I when I talk to people I'm working with about you, you know, yes, you're doing this for you, but you're also doing it for everybody around you, your family, your friends, maybe your colleagues, everybody you're going to come in contact with are going to come in contact with this much more true version of you. And you know, they're going to feel it. They're going to feel the authenticity. They're going to feel the groundedness in you. And you're going to be a safe harbour for them. And also, you know, you're a, you're a lighthouse as well because you are giving, they can see the light. They're going to be able to see the light in you. And they are going to also know that if you can do that for you, they can do that for them. So there's so much goodness that happens just from doing your own work and learning about your how the trait shows up for you because uh, it shows up you know differently for all of us um yeah it doesn't have to be on a podcast like we're doing um uh and that because that's where we started you know when this is the route we we chose but um every, all the hsps who are doing their own work will all be doing it um differently and it's no one way is better than the other just you know right. do it and bring your hsp magic to the world yes please please yeah. yes yeah i think that's probably us for today um thank you um so much for joining us listeners viewers on the youtube most more importantly thank you um you guys for joining us um from the our, our community today and um i think that's it robbie yeah yes that's it for today so please remember that there is great strength in your sensitivity and the world needs you to be who you are so it's so bye, for, bye me. for me and <laughs> bye for me <laughs>We'd love to hear from you with your thoughts and comments on the episodes, as well as suggestions for future topics and guests. We are both HSP coaches and speakers. And to find out more about Robbie, go to robbieleigh.com. And to find out more about Philippa, go to boldhsp.com. See you next time.